If you don't know who Phyllis Hyman is, or you think she's underrated, this video is for you. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm coming back with the new artist spotlight, and this time it's on the one and only Phyllis Hyman. Now, I know this is going to be a very special one because I feel like out of all the artists I'm going to do, I feel like she's the most unknown or she's like the most, she's like the least recognizable. And this is a major reason why I want to do this artist spotlight because I feel like she's an artist that really deserves it. And I know a lot of the times people say, oh, this person, this artist wasn't giving their flowers. This one wasn't giving their just due. But Phyllis Hyman was really not giving her just due. Like, there's a reason why Phyllis Hyman was my most listened to artist on Spotify. And I'm going to get into it. I'm going to just break it down. I'm not going to get into her whole career because you can go on Wikipedia for that. But I'm going to just shed some spotlight on Phyllis Hyman and her stellar but unappreciated career, you know? And when I say unappreciated, I mean to the masses. Phyllis Hyman was born and raised in Philadelphia and, you know, she went through the motions and she had different type of jobs until she decided to start her own band. But after a while, she realized after so many random jobs and her own band, she realized that she wanted to, to go do her own solo act. So she moved to New York and she performed in a lot of nightclubs. You know, back in the, this is the 70s, the mid to late 70s, the New York nightclub scene was popping. Like, you know, nowadays, I'm, I'm not talking about like the club club. I'm talking about like the night jazzy clubs, like where an artist would get on stage to perform and it'd be like a nice little setting with the dim lights and it's the artist is performing with a mic. Might have an instrumental band behind them. That's what I'm talking about. You know, drinks are flowing around, food is flowing around, and it's just all eyes on our artists. Spotlight, artist spotlight. That's what Phyllis Hyman used to do around a New York nightclub scene, right? Nightclub, jazz club. Night, she was discovered by Norman Connors. Now, Norman Connors, back in that era, he was like a big producer for a lot of artists. And he eventually convinced Phyllis to record her version of Betcha by Golly Wow by the Stylistics. Just listen to a snippet. Phyllis Hyman realized how much she had a love for recording and she just had this voice. This is the thing with Phyllis Hyman, right? She would be the first to tell you she didn't grow up singing in church. She didn't grow up singing gospel. You know, to be honest, in the family she grew up with a whole bunch of brothers and sisters, they was against listening to that type of music where they was against listening to secular music and she just didn't really grow up with that background. But she had a voice. She just had that voice. She had that natural singing ability, that natural singing talent. And her voice, her vocals, was so emotive. That's the thing with Phyllis Hyman. And it was so effortless to her. Like, you could tell when a singer is really trying and straining and, you know, they giving it their all. You can see the veins in their neck. Phyllis Hyman, on the drop of a dime, the flip of a coin, you know what I'm saying? A pen. She could just bust out into a song, hit notes, do runs, and it would just be effortless. And Phyllis Hyman realized, and everybody who heard her voice was like, you know, we, we got to get this recorded. Like, her voice had, she had that voice that had to be on wax. It had to be. And when she first started in 1977, she started releasing albums, but they didn't really do that well as like a big mainstream hit success until she did You Know How To Love Me, which I feel like a lot of y'all might know. Now, mind you, at this point, she was on Arista Records, and we all know, most of us know, that Clive Davis was in charge of that, and Clive Davis didn't play. Like, he was real serious about record labels and sales, and, you know, if an artist... 
if you didn't make enough hits in the right amount of time, you was clipped, you know? So she finally had that hit when you know how to love me. But the thing is, after you have one hit, you got to have another one. Like, you can't be a one-hit wonder, two-hit wonder. Like, it's like, okay, what's next? After a few months, what's next? And that's the thing with Phyllis. After that album, Phyllis had a harder time finding, like, another major hit. And the thing is, this is going into the early 80s, right? And disco was still big, but it was also fizzing out more into, like, a pop rock thing. But Clive Davis, for some reason, thought that Phyllis Hyman should start doing more disco, what she was against. But, you know, it was Clive Davis. And they always butted heads. And to the point where she released the album God is a Love in 1983. And he had her singing about riding tigers. novelty song like that she still gave some great vocals but it was kind of like compared to the music out at that time that was just real almost like and Phyllis Hyman would be the first one to admit that it was cheesy but her vocals were just amazing like you look past the cheesiness of the songs that he had her singing for the album her vocals were amazing but she just needed the right material that's the thing phyllis hyman had a voice where she could sing anything she could say the nbc's she could sing the one two threes but she needed the right material to have the most amazing sound of voice the most amazing vocal ability but if the music doesn't add up if it doesn't match up if it's not for the times or if it doesn't hit then it doesn't hit you know on this time she did duke ellington's Sophisticated Ladies, which was a Broadway musical, and she did amazing. Like Phyllis Hyman, her voice was perfect for this, to the point where if you read her biography, which I highly recommend, it's called The Strength of a Woman. I highly recommend it. It's a great read. I read it in like three days. She came into audition, and the first couple of notes she sung. They hired her right on the spot. Now, she wasn't a big... She People know who Phyllis Hyman was at that time. But she wasn't like, you know, a big artist, like known all around the world. People would be like, you know, like Michael Jackson or like Tina Turner. You know, she wasn't that 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 known. But people knew who she was. As soon as she came in the song, they hired her right on the spot. Phyllis Hyman had a voice that was perfect. It was like basically, it was meant for Broadway. Broadway, the theatrics, the drama, the vocal ability, Phyllis Hyman was meant for that. She did excellent. She did so amazing in that show. She got nominated for a Tony Award. And, you know, if I ran those awards, I would have gave it to her. But, you know. The nominees for Outstanding Featured Actors in a Musical are a very interesting group. Marilyn Cooper only appears in one scene of Woman of the Year, but she makes an indelible impression. <laughs> Phyllis Hyman, Phyllis Hyman, a very successful recording artist, is making her Broadway debut in Sophisticated Ladies. Like, just take a look at a few snippets of some of her amazing performances. <laughs> A sentimental mood I can see the stars Come through my room On the wings of every kiss Drift so mellow
She was meant for Broadway, but for some reason, Clive Davis had a problem with it. If you didn't go with Clive Davis, he had a problem. And to, to be honest, at this point, she was already hanging on a thread. And when that disco album, you know, Riding the Tiger, when that didn't go so well, he basically dropped her. And then along the way, in 1985, 1984 to 1985, Clive Davis met Whitney Houston. And do I even need to say anymore? So, you know, Phyllis Hyman, she had to find another record label where she found Philadelphia International Records, which I felt like was a match made in heaven because the producers, Kitty Gamble, everybody she worked with on that label, they understood her, they knew her. And even though she had a thing against singing love songs because she, as she would admit, she had trouble finding love that would last forever or last a long time, or she never felt really, really loved. She sung those songs amazingly. And this is where we get Living All Alone. Now, Living All Alone is my favorite Phyllis Hyman album. Just the title song alone that she named the album after. Just listen to this. Phyllis Hyman was my most listened to artist on Spotify for the last two years. Her music, her vocals, the instrumentals, the production was so top tier. So the, the production was top notch quality. Her vocals were pristine and clean and sharp, crystal clear. So emotive. And it just, when you hear her music, it just raps itself around your eardrums and you just be like wow it's really how music takes you on a journey and 
her music and her vocals have like a real jazzy R&B type of flow but she also adds that power that soul and it's like a perfect blend of jazz R&B soul and then the great instrumentals I mean if I, you know what I'm gonna leave my I made a whole Phyllis Hyman Spotify playlist so if y'all wanna listen to my favorite Phyllis Hyman songs I made like I think it's like at least almost 50 of them I made a whole Phyllis Hyman playlist I'm gonna leave it down below in the comments and in my description box so y'all can see what I'm talking about because it's amazing so around this time this is when Phyllis Hyman adopted that signature style that you know with those those like geometric hats slanted to the side where she had like the big you know the nice shawls and the geometric she would wear like those nice fashion pieces with the shoulder pads and the different colors and the, you know Phyllis Hyman had her own thing going on and it just worked perfectly and another thing about Phyllis Hyman is how great her live performances were throughout time throughout history any many comment sections you go on the Phyllis Hyman videos you'll see somebody reminiscing and talking about a live show they went to and she gave it all she left it all on stage she was such an emotive performer and she's really one of the performers that I really wish I got to see but you know this was you know she passed months before I was even born so it's like but still just listening just reading people's stories about her live performances and it's some on YouTube if you want to look at them You know, it came a point where Phyllis Hyman had been doing this for over 15 to 20 years. And she was just like, all this music she's putting out and all these live performances she's giving. And then you see, you know, she had to watch Whitney Houston, who was on the label she used to be on. She just blew up. And then you have the Anita Bakers and the Janet Jacksons and the Tina Turners and everybody else. After taking a few years off, she released her next album, Problem of My Life, which is another one of my favorite Phyllis albums. And, you know, this is one of, this is the album where she just had, like, she was, like, reflecting on life, and she had, like, a revelations. Another thing about Phyllis Hammond is she was a songwriter, and she wrote some songs that were really reflective of what she was going through in the, her career and in her personal life. And on this album, she had the hit, Don't Wanna Change The World, which became her first number one hit on RB charts. Some of y'all might know. See, this is like almost, after almost 15 years in the music industry, she had finally got her first number one on RB charts. Like, you gotta, like, a lot of people say they don't care about charts, but it's like, if you're in the music industry or you're an artist, like, come on. 15 years, she just got her first number one R&B hit. I mean, you know, every a lot of things were weighing on her. And she also had another one of my favorite songs, When I Give My Love This Time. As you can hear, you can just hear everything. Like she was giving it her all. Like this is after so many years and so many albums of pushing, putting in work. And it's like, you know, she was just trying to survive. Miss Hyman, she was blunt. You see her interviews, she was blunt. She was the first one to say, like, you know, I don't got it like that. But, you know, she made enough off of her records and off her albums and her tours that she was able to live a comfortable life, but it wasn't the life she was supposed to live. She deserved so much more. You listen to her voice, you listen to her records, you listen to her music, you look at her live performances, you see how much she gave to this craft of music and art and performance and vocals. She deserves so much more. She deserves so much more recognition. You see all these different publications and, you know, best this list, best that list and Grammys and 
lifetime achievements, Phyllis Hyman is never mentioned. When that that unsung that they did on Phyllis Hyman, that was a big revelation because that was the first time many people have heard of Phyllis Hyman in years. That was the first time I heard of Phyllis Hyman because they don't play her on the radio that much no more. The only songs they play is You Know How to Love Me, which was her biggest hit to date, uh, besides Don't Want to Change the World. But it's like, Phyllis Hyman didn't get her just due back then, and she still doesn't get it now. But I'm going to give it to her. This is my artist spotlight. You know, I don't know how many people this is going to reach, but, you know, Phyllis Hyman deserves all her flowers. She deserves all her respect. She deserves all her praise. And she deserves everything that she never got because she was just that talented and she gave so much to this craft. She gave so much to the music industry, but we all know the music industry is not so kind no matter how talented you are. Afterwards, you know, Phyllis Hyman had ran into some health issues and she gained some weight and I believe she had like thyroid issues that made her gain weight and this is to the point where towards you know, one into 1995, where she just, she, over the course of her life, over the course of her career, she battled depression. But towards 1995, after she gained her weight and everything, that's when it became like really, really bad. And she had a suicide attempt earlier, but luckily she was able to wake up from it. But in June of 1995, Phyllis Hyman had just had enough. And nobody, it's so many speculations, so many rumors, nobody knows for sure what really happened. But she just decided that, you know, people say, oh, she couldn't find love. People say she wasn't appreciated enough. People say it was just a combination of both. She was scheduled to perform at the Apollo, but in her room, she locked the doors and she, you know, committed suicide. She overdosed on some pills. And no, that was, in many terms, you could say that was the end of her story, but no. Phyllis Hyman, her legacy, her story deserves to be told. She deserves a biopic. She deserves documentaries. She deserves all the praise. She deserves to be inducted. She deserves to be inducted into all these Hall of Fames and Legend Awards, Icon Awards. Phyllis Hyman deserves all of that. But it's like, as much as she was underappreciated back then, it's like she's even more underappreciated now. And I'm trying to get the word out there, like, just Google YouTube Phyllis Hyman. Click on some videos, click on some songs. Watch a master at her craft because she had it. She had it all. But, you know, the industry and the powers that be in the industry just didn't always work in her favor. But I feel like, if anything, Phyllis Hyman gave it, she gave it her all and she still had her fans that loved her. I still love her today. I'm trying to get the word out there. And it's sad the way it ended. And it's sad that she felt so underappreciated and that she still is so underappreciated today. But, you know, that's why I'm going to give that's why I'm giving Phyllis Hyman her flowers now. Because she truly deserves them. So, anyways, guys, that was just my artist spotlight on the one and only the incomparable Phyllis Hyman. Did y'all know about Phyllis Hyman before I did this video? Or if you know about Phyllis Simon, what are your favorite songs by Phyllis Simon? What are your favorite albums by Phyllis Simon? What are your favorite performances by Phyllis Simon? And what do you think about Phyllis Simon's career? And why do you think Phyllis Simon was so underrated and so underappreciated? She experimented with many different songs that could have easily been big radio hits, big performance hits, big Soul Train hits. Some were, but for the majority of her career, she never had that big blowout mainstream success that she so truly deserved. And she never got the recognition that she deserved. And it's just sad. It's just really sad when you think about it. But this was just my way of honoring her and her legacy. And like I said before, it's a reason why she's my number one artist on Spotify for the last two years because her music is just that great. Go down below, what are y'all thoughts on Phyllis Hyman and her career? And her performances. Let's get this discussion going. Let's celebrate Phyllis Hyman in the comments. This should be a really interesting discussion. I can't wait to read y'all comments and interact with y'all. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, 
hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.